in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Dear audience, this is Language and Linguistics Online. Today I intend to talk about generative grammar. Dear students, we should remember that generative grammar is a complete book which comprises 500 to 600 different pages and it has got various chapters. I cannot cover all these things in just one lecture. So I will try later on that I should make more videos on generative grammar. So far as we have already talked about PS rules because generative grammar talks about phrase structure grammar, phrase structure rules. It talks about phrasal categories. It talks about lexical categories. In phrasal categories, for example, noun phrase, verb phrase, prepositional phrase, adjectival phrase or adverbial phrase, we have already talked about different kinds of phrases. And if we further try to understand these phrases, we can find lexicons under them. For example, noun phrase can consist of determiner, optional adjective, head noun and post modification which can be a prepositional phrase or a modifying sentence. And in some of the books, that modifying sentence is called a relative clause. So I should not be covering PS rules again. I should not be talking about lexical categories again. Rather, some of the things that I have not been able to cover up till now, I should talk about them. For example, we have got the concept of deep structure and surface structure we have got the concept of transformations. So in this video, I will be focusing on these two concepts. We should also remember, Norm Chomsky is a mentalist. He is also called an armchair linguist. He believes in intuition. He believes that what goes on in the mind of the person. And he also talks about an ideal speaker or hearer. He has already differentiated between the concept of competence and performance and he believes in the concept of innateness. So Chomsky thinks that the language, language acquisition device, LAD, LAD, it exists in the mind of the person. When the com person comes into this world, he has already quoted some of the other philosophers as well to support his point of view. So that person has got the ability not only to understand the language, but also to produce the language. But then later on, of course, he comes into this world and in the society, he acquires that language. So Chomsky does not believe in performance. No doubt later on from performance, we have got the uh, another, uh, we have got another uh, linguistic subject that is corpus linguistics. And in the beginning, Chomsky was very much against corpus linguistics. Chomsky had divided grammars into two different kinds. For example, descriptive grammar. That grammar should be able to describe all kinds of sentences that you are able to produce. And then the explanatory grammar, that it should also be able to talk about those rules which are inherent. So four postulates that we can talk about under generative grammar, they are as follows. Number one. It must be capable of generating an infinite, unlimited set of sentences by operating a finite set of rules, limited number of rules. For example, we have got three nouns, men, women, animals. We have got two determiners, some and five. We have got two verbs, love and hate, and now, we can generate unlimited number of sentences. So we already know S can consist of NP, VP, NP. So here these uh, some of the items that I have just shared, we can generate unlimited number of sentences. For example, men love animals, women love animals, men hate animals, women hate animals, some men love animals, some men love five animals, some women love five animals. Some women hate animals. Five women hate some animals. So we can generate so many sentences. And of course, their representation in bracket, in, in labeled brackets or T diagrams I have already discussed. Number two, 
a TG or transformational generative grammar model must be explicit and self-sufficient because it tries to describe the ideal speaker hearer's linguistic knowledge and intuition. Of course, generative grammar talks about intuition. Generative grammar talks about inherent structures, structures which are there in the mind of the person. These structures or rules are limited in number, but we can generate unlimited number of sentences and they are very clear. We can apply these rules onto Urdu language, onto Punjabi language or Balochi language and we can produce sentences like S can consist of NP, VP, NP. Main khana khata hoon. I eat food. So here main is NP. Khana khata, kha, khata hoon is VP. And khana is another NP, which is the object here. So these rules can be, you know, applied to so many other languages as well. And people are doing their PhDs, comparing English with Punjabi, comparing English with Urdu language. This model must have three components. A phonological component, a syntactic component, and a semantic component. Of course, Chomsky talks about deep structure and surface structure. Deep structure is abstract in nature. Nobody can see it. But according to Chomsky, the deep structure, it exists in the mind of the person. It is semantic in nature because the human beings, they try to create sentences. First of all, they think about them in their mind. So semantics is there in the mind, how meanings are to be produced. They will be produced after transformations in the form of surface structures. So deep structures, they are there in the mind. Then phonological operations or transformations, they are carried out and surface structures are produced. Number four, it must be able to assign a structure to all sentences accepted by a native speaker Native speaker has got the knowledge of the language. Native speaker has got competence. Native speaker through his or her intuition can tell what is a grammatical sentence or what is not a grammatical sentence and rejected all the sentences which wouldn't be accepted by a native speaker. Dear audience, so far as the concept of grammaticality is concerned, the concept of PS rules are concerned, I have already made a number of videos about them. So you should listen to them and you can talk about or understand the concepts that, you know, uh, Chomsky has produced. So there are PS rules like uh, verb. Now verb can consist of one NP if it is a transitive verb or verb can consist of two NPs. That is direct object and indirect object if it is a ditransitive verb and verb can consist of uh, intransitive verb which does not require any object or NP after that. They disappeared. So these rules are called subcategorization rules. And I have already talked about them. Now work can also demand an NP and PP after that, which will which we will be also which, which, which we will also be discussing in subcategorization rules. Now I should come to surface structure and deep structure. Chomsky has also said that sometimes syntactically a sentence is correct, but semantically it may not be correct. So Chomsky has given the example of colorless green ideas sleep furiously. So colorless green ideas NP sleep VP furiously is an adverbial here. So syntactically this sentence is correct, but semantically it is wrong. Deep structure and surface structure. Now, what Chomsky has given, Chomsky has given an example. John is easy to please and John is eager to please. Surface structure is same. John is NP, is is verb, eager or easy, adjective. To please is an infinitive which is not telling us about the time. But here his is of course is telling us about the time. So syntactically John NP is verb then Easy or eager, adjective, and to please is an infinitive. Now, these two sentences, they have got different deep structures. John, or we can say Ali, is easy to please. It means Ali is object here. Ali is eager to please. It means Ali is working here as a subject. Or John is eager to please. So John here is working as a subject. So in one sentence, John is working as a subject. In another sentence, John is working as an object. But syntactically, 
the surface structure or s structure it is the same but deep structure is different so of course from deep structure the surface structure is produced via transformations another example that i can give you visiting doctors can be nuisance annoying it can have four different deep structures we visit doctors it can be nuisance doctors can visit us they can be nuisance but surface structure is there visiting doctors can be nuisance so this is how you know structural ambiguity is also created we are told that sentences in a language basically consist of two elements np and vp noun phrase and verb phrase but we have not yet been told what noun phrase and verb phrase are of course the noun phrase is explained that it can consist of determiner optional adjective head noun n and post modification or post modifying sentence or pp another surface or deep structure we can see it can be found in active voice and passive voice the boy will kick the ball the boy is np will kick is vp the ball is another np it will be converted into the passive voice the ball will be kicked by the boy the ball will be kicked by the boy so we know what are the rules of producing a surface structure that there should be verb be is mr was were or will be or shall be plus third form of the verb past participle or by phrase is added before the object which is basically the subject so the boy will be, the ball will be kicked by the boy so transformation is carried out the object has gone to the place of the subject and subject has been moved to the place of the object but so far as the deep structure is concerned it is the same there is no change in the meaning the deep structure is same but surface structure we have got two realizations of the deep structure here and of course there will be some changes if you represent it through a t diagram so we have got initial elements and syntactic components base sub component components components ps rules deep structure transformation is applied and surface structure is talked about or is spoken so i have talked about deep structures i have given you three different examples john is easy to please john is eager to please i have talked about that visiting doctors can be nuisance i have also talked about that the boy will kick the ball or the ball will be kicked by the boy now we come to the transformations in transformations we have got wh questions for example what is ali buying or what is john buying what have you done this week or who did you talk to now basically remember that sentence cannot be produced if a verb requires an object or np after that so deep structure which is abstract in nature chomsky thinks or chomsky believes or chomsky says that it is in fact ali is buying what ali is buying what or you have done what this week you have done what this week so at the place of the object or np the complementizer or question q that is what is added so from deep structure because this speaker is supposed to produce a question interrogative sentence this what is taken by subject auxiliary inversion to the first place of the sentence so transformation is carried out and in this way the complementizer or question word it is moved to the first part of the sentence to the first place of the initial place of the sentence and transformation is carried out so this transformation is carried out in the mind and then the surface structure is produced i will be showing you the you know surface structure or this transformation which is abstract in nature in the video ali bought what you have done what this week mary talked to whom who did you talk to or you talked to whom or you talked to who so from who that is transformed that is moved 
from its original position in the deep structure to the initial position in the surface structure i want to know what john is buying so of course complementizer it can also work here clauses like what john is buying what you have done this week and you who you talk to are called indirect questions an indirect question does not request information from the addressee rather it serves as an argument of a verb that s selects we have also read about selectional rules that verb what the verb selects in the indirect question is the complement of the matrix verb wonder or no i know i wonder the matrix sentences that embeds an indirect question as a whole may be a declarative sentence each sentence taken as a whole is a declarative sentence so i wonder you have done what this week i wonder whom you talk to this week so here i wonder what or i wonder whom or i wonder what you have done this week basically it is coming at the place of the complementizer if we draw the t diagram so what or that they are the complementizers so of course complementizer is also moved to the initial position from indirect question the direct question is formed what did john think that i like who will be there so i shall talk to who who shall i talk to from deep structure transformation is carried out and surface structure is produced there are some other kinds of sentences called topicalized sentences wasif's articles i will never read that he will rise among the best i have never doubted john i am sure you will be angry when he finds out about it this book i thought you told me that you don't like emma said he would pay the bill soon and pay the bill i am sure he never will then transformation is carried out in relative clauses the embedding structures we have considered up to now generally involve subordinate clauses that play the role of a, an argument for a verb relative clause is a subordinate clause i have already made a video on it that you were late surprised me so that you were late it is coming at the place of the subject what he will say is unclear to me a subordinate clause can be used as an adverbial adjunct as well shan arrived before bilal left i will give you the money if you promise me to get lost forever so complementizer you know i wonder what john has done so what you know it will change its place in questions so it will be moved to the initial position the man who you saw yesterday is my brother so who you saw is coming at the place of a complementizer okay so who you saw you know it can be deleted it can be put somewhere else in the beginning of the sentence through transformations so in my today's class i have talked about some of the concepts of generative grammar that i did not talk about in my previous videos overall we have talked about ps rules we have talked about sub categorization rules and in today's class i have talked about transformations and deep structure and surface structures and how deep structure which is a abstract idea and abstract idea you know uh, it, it is discussed and through transformations how surface structures they are produced thank you very much